Consider yourself a fisherman. Just how far do you want to take it? Well people, I'm down at Topper Fisheries, I've been in to see Mark uh, Brown in the tackle shop and they've got me fishing. How they managed to do this I do not know. My second attempt at pole fishing on their match lake, which apparently has some stupendous catches on it. It needs to with my angling skill. He's given me, and I'm here because it is windy. This area apparently is the part of the Blackmoor Vale. Uh, Mark said it's always pretty well always windy up here and you're quite high up but by golly I think the wind has to go around the shoulders of fish first so I don't know what sound you're going to get um, that's why the body's up he's given me the top two sections of a margin pole three six nine feet has the elastic running through the center um, then you put your rig on here as you can see it joins to this pink thing that's my end rig, which you get, I've got something to show you. You buy these like this, look. This is just a pole rig, three meters. That's the line. It says here, down to 17 mil, size 12 hook, and a float. So you just undo the winder, off that, off that winder, put it on the pole, and away you go. This one he set up for me, idiot proof. But it's got this thing in here. I hope you guys can see this. It's, it's a puller, a puller or something. So let's imagine if the fish stretches all the elastic out. Should I catch one? Of course, he tells me. He assures me. I'll, I've, it's just no question I'm going to catch something. Um, it will stretch, 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 stretch. Well, the last, oh, the only other time I've used a pole was, um, I think it was a three meter one as well. I had a lot of trouble with it stretching backwards because I want to wind down. I'm a, I'm a rod and reel man, really, as you know. So I'm going to give this a go. It's all set up there with a little hook, a small hook. I've got here, I'm going to put a bit of bait in. He said, definitely, definitely. Well, I've got no choice but to fish the margins with this because there's no reel on it to cast. I'm on their main match, or one of their main matches. They've got one, two, three, I think they've got about four match lakes here, aside from all their big carp lakes. That's where I'm going to be going tonight for a night session trying to get a big carp but during the day I can't sit there day and night I don't mind sitting at night for a carp but big ones but I can't sit all day as well so I need to get amused and that's what I'm doing I've got sweet corn from the freezer little bits of bread you think I'm joking the wife buttered this okay so she's buttered it and then turn it over it's got green pin mold on it and she's trying to give it to me what even I've got my limits Supermarket corn, some casters, most of which have been in the freezer and will probably float, and a little pinch which um, Grant gave me for tackle up of hemp. He had an over order of hemp, the guy didn't turn up. So I'm just going to walk along, I'm going to drop a bit of corn in, um, a little bit of hemp, right, right in the margins. One of these swims, I've got my umbrella here, just purely because of wind. I'll drop it in up there and we'll just see if anything comes along. Okay, so you can buy bags off hemp it's all cooked like this and when it's cooked the actual black seed splits and you get to see the little white kernel coming out you know uh, which shows you it's cooked properly i've got a few casters there that graph from tackle up give me left over they've gone to floaters they've been in the freezer then i've got some bread obviously a hand white rag and the lake there is just one of the match lakes at tobba um they've got is it four match lakes there um but there's just a huge number of fish in there, no question of that. And they're all nice and they're open. Uh, they're not all snaggy, you know, they're not uh, difficult to fish. They've all got this sort of small, I suppose, meter square platform you can fish from. You can park your car right by the swim, so lots of angles like that. And you can feed so close in the marge, just look at that. Now some of those are floaters, some are sinkers. It's all going in. Bit of sweet corn, it doesn't really matter what sort of baits. 
uh, the honest those fish will find it. They are fed by matchmen in you know big matches, so they they know and will eat pretty much anything that goes in. And look, at, if you can see the colour of water there, you'll get an idea. Can't believe it, people. This carp. I've just literally as I threw it in. I don't know. They take the this. They're boiling on the bottom there. That's ridiculous. Some of that sweet corn might still have ice in it because it's floating. Look how it's coloured up, muddied the water. Well, I may just as well stay down where my umbrella is because obviously there are carp in pretty well, I would imagine, every swim. I see no reason to cast over there, even if you were fishing here. So I'm sheltered here just for the microphone purely, kneeling down there. You've got to be very crafty and cautious. <laughs> I'm going to chuck some in there. Let's save some for hook bait. This is where ground bait, they would just demolish it. They used to, look at this, I can see tails going there. That's ridiculous, I just saw a tail come up. Guys are going to leave, look, 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 look. Oh my God. So they obviously like hemp, so they can have some more. Greg. Here's a little tip, guys. I'm forever having these last in these uh, mats disappear. So I've got it clipped on here. Make sure if the wind's like blowing like it is now, that it's clipped down and at least you uh, won't lose it. So here's the pole. Now, previously we did a talk in one of the tackles, right? Tiny little pippy ones. I can't, I could manage those down here because it's so close. But to be honest, I'd sooner have this bristle tight one. And look at all the shot. There's no way in the world I'm putting those on at all. It's not happening. So this is where you unhook it from, like this. You can swing it out. And I'm just going to, and what you can do is possibly tangle it like I already have done. This is a Voyager Discovery, if ever there was. Swing it out. I don't know what the depth is there. I think, I think a fish just took the bare hook. <laughs> um, and then, should the elastic stretch too much, you can pull it in and out on this side sort of roll a bit here. Oh, no, it's a bare hook. Come on, mate. <laughs> that, was a, that was a bare hook. Right, here we go. Look at the mud, guys. I mean, I've got polarizing glasses on, but the mud. It's just ripping. Here comes my first Tobba elastic stretching. And you can see how the elastic stretches there if I hold it out. Carp. This is going to be a one hit wonder. He's gone. There's the float. I lean forward. I'm on. Now, the rod doesn't, the rod, the pole doesn't bend, guys. And that rubber band is now where that orange tag is. Oh God, way out there. Look at the, oh, he's come off. So you see that one just pinged off. The elastic shoots back up inside there to the bunk, comes all the way down here where Mark's made a fixed point of it. Some of these fish are big fish people, absolutely. Goodness me, I thought there'd be two or three pounders. It's a wonder they're not coming up out of the water to pick the loose bits up. He did say this is their top match water. I shouldn't think that float is even going to cock there. That looks like we're on. So the actual pole doesn't bend at all, if you can see it. The elastic is stretched right out there. Pulled all the way out and gone out to that orange pippy bit there. And I can't wind down or do anything, I just have to let the elastic tie the fish out. I 
wonder when they get those huge match weights, how they manage to get the fish in quick enough. It's a weird feeling because all I can do is just hold, hold the end of this uh, pole. And pulling against that rubber is what's wearing the fish out. Look, it's not a two pounder, I can assure you. This, this is where I want to wind down, shorten up to the float. In expectation. Good lord. That's a good fish. It's hard to believe that the elastic is actually wearing the fish out. Oh man. Wow. I've got a feeling, people. What? <laughs> what? They surely don't catch these in the matches, one after the other, surely. That, I turn it around, is the best part of seven plus pounds, people. Good lord. Easy, might, might go a bit more. Now I've got nothing dry to lean on. I haven't bought a chair because Mark assured me I wouldn't need to sit down. I almost don't dare throw any more loose feed in to be honest. I'm not going to throw any loose feed in at all. It's just laying flat. I will say you're right over the top of the float foot. Missed it. Right over the top of the float for uh, lifting into the fish. I wonder if there's some small fish in there. No, he's trying to eat the float. There we go. Boom. Oh, oh, oh. Mark did assure me the elastic's very strong. Oh, he's peeled off. He's come off. <laughs> I thought he was going to take my teeth out. Dare I throw any more in? They're just not. They're not small fish, I thought they'd be about a pound and a half. Oh, that's ridiculous. Now, is this the right way to play the fish, guys? With one hand here at the bottom of it and one hand at the top. Look how far the elastic's gone. Oh, no, no. That's gone way out. This is where I can't shorten up, so I've got to let the uh, stretch of the elastic do its work. He's come off as well. Well, it certainly comes back with a bing, doesn't it? I don't even know where that's gone. Well, I've had several more fish, and I've got the adapter here. I've just got a piece of fishing line, regular line. I've cut the float off here to save it, and um, I've got to tie a hook on there, I feel, I could actually watch a line in there tweak away. We'll try it. So here's my hook. It is. Let's put that grain of corn there for you. Or was. It is or was. I've run out now. I think it was a 14. So this is something that they haven't tried before. A 
missed it. I'm on. Free lining, no float, no short, just a hook. Smaller fish this time. Possibly with this one you can see the principle if I wanted to pull more pressure, I pull the elastic out. Yeah, I can. I can actually tighten it right up. And then if the fish starts pulling too hard, I can release this hand and let it go the full length of the elastic. Come and meet my... Come and meet my friend Matt. Small mirror, back he goes. No float, no shot. Straight on margin fishing. I reckon they get eat this almost as soon as it goes in, people. So look, there it is, just a hook. You can see there, fabulous weather. I mean, it's the most sort of unfishy type of weather you would expect to go and catch anything in. But a tobber, if you'll notice while I'm playing this fish, or it's playing me, it's probably it playing me, stretching the elastic there, is uh, the water's very, very coloured. It's not clear, and that's because of the huge head of fish they got in there, I believe. I don't honestly know what the uh, lakes are underneath. They might be clay-based lakes, that makes some colour up like that as well. But that's handy for the fishing. What I did find difficult is this part there, right there, because normally with the rod and reel, I would be winding down, getting the rod, if you like, closer to the fish, pressuring it and pulling it in. But you just have to wait for that elastic to stretch and stretch and stretch, wear the fish out, and it pops into the net. You can see that coloured water in the background there. That's not from that fish scrapping around. That's some other fish digging there. Get yourself a plastic disgorger. They are very handy just to get the hook out. Now, I almost always end up busting my thumbnails on small hooks like that trying to get them out. So a plastic disgorger just enables you to grip the hook properly and being barbless, it just pops straight out. Single grain of sweet corn, throw in about half a dozen grains and I'm basically, just like pole fishing, I'm lowering, or it's not a cast. This one looks like a mirror, a nice looking mirror. Some of these are decent sized fish. I'm actually looking for different fish now guys as they come up. I wonder if I put some biscuits out. I'm trying to find the bigger fish. And there he is. A little bit bigger that one.
people, they are not small fish, I can assure you. It's very easy to just get the uh, hook out with the disgorger. Oh, do you think it's this? The totally awesome fishing show skill? No, it's the number of fish that's in there. This is a nice mirror, I'll get my slow lift. You might go nuts. Yeah, he's going to go nuts, isn't he? Yeah, he's going to go nuts. Here we go. What is wrong with that? On a pole. Hard to believe James used it like So, painfully obvious, these guys in here, they can eat me out of house and home. I haven't got enough bait to choke them off. I've caught loads, I'm gonna catch one more on this. And uh, I think that's it. Shows you it works. I'm gonna see, I don't know how big they go in here. How big is they, you know, they're, they're big fish for a match, I'm amazed. There's pretty well a herd of them just around the corner. <laughs> so you can see, if you do want to shorten it up, you just pull on this rubber band here. Shortens the elastic out, makes it tighter. Unfortunately for me, it's making the fish fight harder. And I'm guessing you lock it off against your wrist like this, the pole. But this is not a pound and a half, two pound fish, which is what I thought was in here. No wonder they get such huge match weights. They must use super strong elastic, even more special poles. Well, we see if we can get this one out. I don't even need a float. Pretty shocked at the size of the fish. I'm not going to say I'm not. I am. Look at this, guys. This is ridiculous. This is probably probably getting off eight pounds. Somebody would just check this one out. Just check this fish out. You you'd be pleased to catch this one. Carp fishing all night. All right, give him some tonic immobility. Notice how he goes to sleep with tonic immobility. That's turning them upside down. Let's give him a second or two of that. And as I was saying, you'd be pleased to catch this all night on a regular carp trip. Let's get it back, guys. I think I'm done here. I've had a lot of fish. I'd probably say if I've had 10, 60 pound of fish. I haven't filmed them all. Now if you think this pole fishing is something you want to try, you can get a margin whip like this, or you can get a long pole. Now, when I mean a long pole, I mean a very long pole. And down here at Tobba, Mark Brown's going to show us their latest stock of whatever's in this warehouse. And honestly, I haven't been in there yet. He says I'm going to be very impressed. Let's pack up, and there's not a lot, is there, to pack up. It's a pole with a hook on it, or one of those float rigs. Unbelievable fishing. If you're a beginner, or somebody bringing in their youngster to start fishing, this might be the place. Go into the shop, ask them about this, see if you can catch a few as well. Right, I'm coming to see Mark from Tom the Man. He wanted to show me what he calls, what do you call it, Mark? This is our, this is our new purpose-built pole alley. So whether you're looking for your first pole, um, which, whether that be a margin pole or a budget pole, right through to some of the higher end poles, for example, the Daiwa Air Z at five and a half thousand pounds. What, can, what? Yeah, five and a half thousand pounds. Um, so we can help you out regardless of budget um, or level ability, all those kinds of things. We will have a pole here where you can come along, physically try it out, use it side by side against other poles and you know, give you the best possible opportunity to see. Now this can't be right, Mark. How, in God's name, how long is it? I've never so seen a pole well, these, that long. These particular ones here, there's a couple of margin poles at the bottom, which would be between seven and a half and 10 meters. 
These poles here are all set up at 14.5 metres. The 14 metres, that's not 14, 14 feet, guys. No, no. <laughs> 14 metres. Absolutely. So, yeah, and uh, the majority of these ones actually come at 16 metres, um, a standard which is uh, not a requirement, but your average open um, and club angler generally likes to have a 16 metre option. So, we obviously cater for that, but we do have entry level poles and also, you know, budget margin poles, all those kind of things, regardless of, of what you're looking for, you can come here and try before you buy, essentially. Now, these are poles, so people know, you've got to ship them, take them apart when you bring the fish in. How do you see the float at that distance? Well, me personally, I think <laughs> I'd struggle, Graham. Um, exactly, it, it gives you a different dimension of fishing in terms of accuracy and sensitivity. On venues like ours, you don't always need to be fishing at these longer lengths. But yes. some venues dictate you need to fish close to a feature, or you know, a certain, you know whether that be a, a visual feature that's out of the water, or you know, with lilies or something like exactly. that. Exactly, or it can be depths if you're fishing on natural venues, drop-offs, things like that. Yeah. Whereby having that option to go at that length is, you know, is there for you. But as I said, I would struggle to see the float. Um, but yeah. They obviously do. We regularly get, you know, people fishing here at 16 metres. You don't need to. You can catch yeah. here on a top kit plus one, which yeah, is yeah, essentially yeah. just the top two. That's I, the last I thing. can actually see, a, 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 even though I'm not a match machine, well, no. Yeah. An advantage, let's say you want to see it, but right down the end is a wheelbarrow. Now, if you said that was a bunch of lilies, a rebed or a feature, exactly. I can't cast within a foot of that. Yeah. I could push that pole out and lower the float. So there I can see a sort of Absolutely. benefit. Absolutely, and not only that, with, with the small cups and things which are available, you can, you can ship bait out. So you would take off your elasticated top yeah. and put on what they call a cupping top, which would then have a cup on the end full of feed, whether that be pellets, ground bait, maggots, whatever. You would tip that at the exact distance that you're fishing at or they also do, um, just on the wall over there, we have the small pole pots, which are essentially used to call them kinder pots. You can actually slide those onto your baited uh, top kit and yeah. then feed whilst your rigs out there. So you have the option of putting in more bait via a bigger cup or with a, with a pole pot, as they call it, you're kind of live fishing whilst baiting at the same time, but with a smaller amount. Now, I heard a word on the grapevine when I was coming down there to have a go. I only come like once a year, maybe twice a year sometimes. Yes. Uh, where it was, you broke, I can't believe you're going to tell me this is true. I think last year I came down, the, the match record on one of your lakes was 700 pounds. Yes. And now it's gone. It's gone again, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the fishing up there has exploded. It's not something, <laughs> when John originally stopped the lakes, that he wasn't looking for huge weights. Yeah. During uh, COVID lockdown things, when there was nobody here and the fish were being fed, it's kind of almost like they've been hand reared to the point now where people are catching so close in yep. from the off. A lot of venues you would have to bring the fish into you. So that's a sort of equaliser for general matchmen that want to enter matches, yeah. I would imagine. Oh, yeah, in ter exactly. You've got to <laughs> it is a bit of a fish race, though. It's, we fully appreciate here it's not everyone's cup of tea. Sure, it's, yeah. It, you know, it's, and it's not what we ever intended, but it's out there. That's it's how well it's fishing, and that's how it is. But I do appreciate that some people would say that's not fishing. Some people like it, some people don't. That's exactly, fine. I know, I know. but still, yeah. nevertheless, it's quite a significant amount of fish that can that's be caught. And, and I have to uh, admire the match fishing techniques, baits, ways they feed to be able to Definitely. produce that. Definitely. And that's in what, five hours? Five hour match, one, yeah. One, one rod. Yeah, and the- I keep, don't get that uh, right. Uh, exactly, and the keep net limit is 55, uh, sorry, 65 pounds of fish yeah. per net. So obviously those Not guys are having to carry a lot of keep nets because, you know, for, fish welfare sake but also the lads that have to weigh in oh of course you, yeah yeah you you know it's you know we although it sounds like a lot of fish in a net some venues would allow you to put 100 150 yeah. pounds in a net wow a lot. so obviously we, we reduce ours down but that creates a separate problem where an angler needs to be carrying over 10 nets which is not ideal <laughs> but that's yeah. how it is yeah that's but i mean I've only recently literally uh, done a little bit of margin pole fishing, local tackle shot, lent me some scout stuff, you know. Yeah. But I was very taken with the rigs, the end rigs, yes. and they are very, very effective and delicate presentation. And you get to see like anything even sniffs at it, you get, generally yeah. will get it. So the match side of it has definitely, I feel, benefited Joe Average regular fishing. Yeah, you yeah, know? You yeah. Know? And also the advancements with. Um, some of the top sets now, what's changed is 
for example, on this pole here. I'll talk, explain what a top set is, Mark. So this, this top two section here, you would run an elastic through here. Sure. Now, is, that, is that where that bung goes and the elastic goes Well, through? yeah, traditionally, you would have had a bung in the bottom, which, yes. would, be, which would be fixed in position. So it would, it would just slide up inside, and then your elastic would come out of the top here. Yep. When you hook your fish, your elastic comes out, and that will then give you a, your, obviously your kind of drag, essentially. Yes, you would be cushion. playing, you'd be shipping, you'd have your pole out, you could then play it off the top two, or if it's a bigger fish, you ship sections on, depending on how you fish it. But with the advancements of technology now, we have what's called a side puller. Oh, so I've what we do that. now is, to get the fish in quicker or get them under control, it enables you to use a lighter elastic so you don't bump off smaller fish. Yep. But at the same time, if you need to get them in quick or get them under control from a feature, you can strip the elastic from the side of the pole. You hold it with your left hand, say, so your depending right hand. on which handed you are, but there's a little roller in here, so the elastic runs down, comes out the side on a little bead, so it can't come out. And as you put your fish and you're playing it, you can physically strip elastic out of the side, which it then obviously puts tension on the line, yeah. or, the, or the, your line and the elastic, and enables you to get them in quicker. So, you know, these are sort of some of the advancements that there are now with yeah. pole yeah. fish. That's been around a few years now, but um, yeah, it, it's kind of a mainstay now of match fishing. And for match fishing, just well, look, I mean, you see, this is just part of your mail order warehouse, oh, isn't it? Absolutely. The other side over there, we've got, you know, there's three, four lads over there packing full time now. Really? It's, uh, My it's gosh, very, really very busy, it. yeah. Before, when I came, you had caravans here. Exactly, yeah, this was a, a oh, CL site. It yeah, was, absolutely. I, I fished yeah. here and I could hear the diggers going. <laughs> yeah. An amazing, great big building now. Just uh, briefly, just show us those seats over there yeah, because so you're, for you're, match fish in case this guy's one now um is sitting on a on a seat box there's obviously various different makes and models available um these are just you know a couple of options here this the foot platform extends out from the box um so when the so it's angler, almost like a little seat now then. exactly so when the angler sat on the box that one's not actually gonna, gonna come out but now. you can alter the front legs as well that's right yeah so that's there we go Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the foot platform comes out so that the angler's got a, a sturdy platform to put their feet. You've then got your legs for attachments. Most of them would have an accessory bath here, which then allows them to attach nets, side trays. Oh, yeah, because your... you've got all those keep nets. You'd have to have loads of rod exactly. rest, wouldn't you? I never so, thought of that. Yeah, you can put all your various attachments on there. And yeah, and you've got, they've all got side drawers and such forth on there for all their bits and pieces, plummets. And uh, disgorge, you know, all the all the bits and pieces you'd need to carry. Wood, ma wood matchmen, look, the carp guys can spend a lot of money carp fishing. Yep. I've been in there, there's all carp guys. Yep. You know, I just hear the till ringing. It's all good business, I understand. But is the match fishing getting bigger than the carp no, fishing or say, what? No, I would say, and this is a, an honest assessment, yeah, the yeah, average you... age of the match angler is is significantly higher oh, than yeah, on yeah. Other, other types of angling. Yeah. Cost is a factor. Uh, with, with you know, you have to pay your pools and such forth. Sure. You don't have to spend, as I've mentioned at the start, you can spend five and a half thousand pound on a pole, but you can also spend fifty quid on, yeah. a, on a, a, you know some form of pole. A basic. Yeah, yeah, but you know, as I say, the demographic of the match angler is the age. Is yeah, yeah, I get it. When I see matches, I do see yeah. that the age thing is a bit like trout fishing. Yes. They absolutely. tell me the older guys, there's less younger guys coming through. Yeah. But with a carp seems to be 20 to 50 would i be yeah, right absolutely. i'd say i'd say on the match side of things here 40 plus there's yeah. very few under 30s yeah. one or two uh, there are some good young guys around though aren't there oh, they do matches exceptional really young good. anglers yeah but i think it, it's not for, for a lot of youngsters i think carp fishing lure fishing just a little bit more appealing perhaps yes. than match fishing yeah. um that, you know, don't get me wrong, that's, it's not for everybody and some people love it, but it's, I'd say on, on average, match fishing, the attendances locally, whether it's here or other venues, tend to be shrinking each year. And it's the same with club, the sure. clubs with their matches as well, yeah. not just commercial fisheries. Yeah. The average age of the anglers fishing club matches is also significantly higher, so. Well, we do the all-round fishing shows. You know, I do actually do all-round fishing. The one I don't do is match fishing, but I would say there seems to be three I'm calling it demographics. It would be carp fishing. That would be, you know, significant on its own. Yeah. It would be the match fishing. And then there's what I call, I call myself in that bracket, all round fishing. Yeah, yeah. So I do a bit, of, I know you do a bit of everything yourself. You go drop shotting for perch, yeah. a bit of river fishing, a bit of lake, you know, mix yeah. it up. Yeah. And is that what you find? Because you mostly you've got 
I'm going to say carp and match. If anybody's into that, you almost have to come to Tom. There's so much stuff here. Yeah. And I can't imagine anybody walking out that shop without <laughs> buying some yeah. form of bait. You There's know? certainly a lot of choice there. But you there. do fly gear as well, don't you? We do a very limited amount of very limited. Yeah. Normal, it's actually more sort of course oriented fly, if that makes sense. So yeah. we, you know, the uh, imitation. Carp flies and stuff. Exactly, carp yeah. flies. Yeah. Things that are suit, because we don't have the depth of knowledge in fly fishing, it's not something that we actually go into yeah. very but you, much. But you were telling me early on when we talked on the phone that people are getting more and more interested in the carp fishing on the fly rod, they are. which yeah. I've seen that my way. Yeah. You know, I think some... it's just that lighter tackle thing and getting the maximum enjoyment out of any size of fish, just balanced tackle. Yeah, I think and mobility. It. You don't exactly. need really Exactly. So these are the rollers that... Um, yes, this is what you would... I'd be wary, wary of shredding <laughs> and snapping that one. Yeah, so this is what you would roll your pole back on. You'd have the... I see. Normally you'd have one, if not two of these behind you. Generally, if you're fishing at a longer length of your pole, you'd have two of these on our lakes up here. Again, you're only fishing short in the summer. You don't need to have, you know, multiple rollers out here in the summer. Um, but yeah, we just keep a very small sort of display selection as you've seen already in the shop Graham. This is purely for whilst you're in it just to fill the walls and show you know the various brands what they have on you know a small bit of what they have on offer but all the main stocks over in, over in the main the retail area. Yes. But yeah. this just to give people a guide I want you to go and pick this pole up because you'd look at the length of this which is, I'm amazed, it's absolutely gobsmacked. I am, look at the length of it. You think that's stupid, it's impossible to lift up. But the weight yeah. of these, they're made of what now? Uh, so this would be carbon, this one. This particular one's one of the, although it's not the most expensive in the shop, uh, this particular pole here, and I'm not a pole angler, but I'll, uh, I'll hold it up for the demonstration purposes. So yeah, yeah. excuse my um, technique. Uh, this one is three and a half thousand pounds. So this isn't the most expensive one in the shop by any means. But it's actually one of the stiffest and most well-balanced one from an Italian brand called Colwick. Wow, look. So, yeah. oh, I've heard of those, Colwick. I think they do beach rods, or did do they beach rods. They do, and they do. Let's um, go down so this way, you can see That's them. at 14 and a half metres there. As you can see, like I say, ignore my technique. If you're a match angler watching this, you're probably thinking, I'm all right, Wally. Um, but that's but, well, I would struggle to see the float at that distance. However, it's incredibly responsive. As you can see, with just the smallest of lifts, that's, yeah. That would be enough to set the float. So, you know, it's very... very and you, and you, you don't need loads of this as a counterbalance back. No, you could. I mean, these sections here, that would take it to 16 metres and would give it a form of counterbalance. And also, oh, really? that, that section there as well is, is more reinforced. So it would protect the end of the pole. Um, but yeah, which is what those shorter sections there also do as well. So if I go down the end, you can see yeah. it's not fibbing. I'll follow it with the camera. So this is what you I can't can cast this far with a normal rod. <laughs> Look, there you can see it there, guys. That's off. I can come here. And that's... I, the float would be here. Yeah. And I'm just assuming you can see Mark has got hold of that. Easily can move it up and down. Yeah, and, and anglers of a good skill can still feed with a catapult. As you, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm a bit of a... I'm a this isn't my type of fishing, but... Due to the balance and the weight and stuff like that, it's it's still it's it's a handful for someone like me, but it would still enable people to feed and do other stuff. And uh, as I say, you can it's responsive enough that you would be able to hit the smallest of bites at its full length. Now, if somebody coming down and wants to travel and go through some poles seriously. Uh, down here, do they need to book with you rather than just uh, rock booking, up? Booking would get, I mean, we to go through this. So yeah, if you I wanted, mean, we've had people in the last week come from Oxford, Kent, you know, which is fantastic uh, because there's very few of these facilities around. I've never seen if, anything like it, to be honest. <laughs> if they would like uh, to make an appointment, that's great because then we can dedicate more time. Exactly. But walk-ins are very welcome. You know, quite a lot of people come here on the fly or whatever. Although we out in, we are out in the sticks. And that's equally as welcome. But if uh, yeah, anybody makes an appointment, then we can put it in the diary and you know really make sure that you know there's one, if not two, staff here, so one of them can show you around. Or if we get an additional person come in, yeah. they can be helped. But appointment's great. But you're more than welcome just to turn up and have a look as well. And of course, they can have a go on your lakes, most of which up the top end here. I exactly. call them a day ticket. Make a day of it. Yeah, yeah. food van on site. Yeah. Visit the tackle shop. And uh, yeah, and as I say, it's just a unique chance if you're spending. Regardless of what your budget is, just a chance to make sure you're yeah. making the right decision, spending your hard-earned money. Talking earlier, actually, about you know the pole rigs and such forth, to the point where if, if the anglers are being prepared at home and setting up you know in advance and getting everything sorted, 
we actually do these uh, float shotting tubes now, so it enables you to make sure that your rig is finely tuned, your float is perfectly shotted, and yeah, it's just a, it's a product that's been around a long time. But we do it at home then before you go to the match. Yeah, absolutely. So that then you're you know on the bank if you, you you're bagging up or whatever, you know that every rig you put out is shotted to perfection. Now I know a lot of people would argue your float goes under, it goes under, and I completely understand that. But when the guys are fishing at a higher level or perhaps ropes yeah, fishing and yeah. things like that, they have it dotted down so that <laughs> you literally roach, rut, anything. If if you get a pickup, that float it's it's down. So my local guy he gave me a, a little uh, rig called a dibber. Is it a dibber? Dibber, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's got a no that's a no-go for me. That's yeah. just like a <laughs> that's it, yeah. micro dot. Just yeah. Yeah, a like lot that. of people like a bit more bristle shape. Yeah, that's it, bristle. <laughs> like, yeah. But no, absolutely so if you're really looking to fine-tune your rigs and uh, be prepared then this is the uh, the option for doing it at home. Well, you can see all the top brands, all the latest ones, all mean nothing to me, but the latest brands are all there. Oh, what I do recognise the old CC more, because that's my uh, favourite boilie. And we're going to go into the warehouse and see what's in there. Yeah. So this is your cardboard box processing yeah. centre. Yeah, so we try and, uh, although uh, you can argue we're not doing our bit for the planet, we try and reuse as many boxes. So although it looks a terrible mess up the middle, all of those boxes will be reused so that we're not buying packaging in. Yeah, so when you sell something, you come in and rebox yeah, to yeah, send out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if we can reuse the boxes rather than just, um, you know, destroy them or whatever, then it's uh, with the amount of stuff that we send out, it's very handy. I mean, you can see the stock. I mean, <laughs> it's a bit like that pole room. When you look at the amount of boxes here at Tobber that they get for <laughs> that, I just walk along as people, the general tackle shop, you know, it's not, it's not of the same level. No, this is uh, so goods in at the far end here. So this stuff's just been checked in. So this will need to be put on the on the racking and such forth, and then distributed to the various aisles, whether that be for bigger items downstairs here, or uh, we also have the mezzanine level up there, which has got your reels, terminal tackle, clothing, and such forth up on the mez. There. I mean, it's just a huge uh, enterprise of people. Um, they won't come down here. This is, this is for people that perhaps do live a long way away, can't get away, yep. and they want to buy. They just come online. They can buy online Absolutely. off your website. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, on, on our top of our website, it's all everything that is uh, literally in store or on. You know, you, it's not a case of it's online only. Everything we do here, you can walk and get from the shop. It's not. Um, I know some some you know setups have it whereby it's a website only item. Not the case here. Everything that's on our website is available you know, in store. Got it. Well, this is the, uh, well, it's just called Home Ground Lake. I, I fly fish that, it's really good. I cannot tell you if you throw floaters in there, how many are in there. Absolutely huge number of fish. Indeed, there are in all of the match lakes, up at Tobber. Now, whether you like it or don't like it, pole fishing is very, very popular. And you can see here, these are people just come on a day ticket and a lot of the time they want to do match practice, they're just learning different techniques, trying different bits and pieces. But you can see the length of the pole and the rollers that Mark was talking about. So if you've got a really long pole in sections, you feed it out on the rollers. Uh, this gentleman happens to be fishing in the margin on the left with probably three sections, I don't know. So if he wants to fish on the other side, he can do. He can keep extending it out to, as Mark said, 16 metres. And he's got a nice comfy seat there, it's all set, so you'll get an idea. You see there's no reel on it, you just join all these sections together and push your float end rig out into the middle of the lake or on the far side of the lake or on the other side of the canal. So there's no question that um, pole fishing is highly, highly successful, as indeed is the quality of fish at Tobba. If you're a beginner, you might want to pop there, just give it a go. It's not for everybody, but if you want to learn to catch some fish and change techniques... That's the place to go.